so this is uh, getting started with Genie using the Genie portal. I'm Sarah Edwards. Um, I'm being assisted today by Aaron Helsinger, who's walking around, Tom Mitchell, who's walking around, Marshall Brand will be in and out and will help. Also, Nikki Riga and Chaos Goyditsky um, are helping out in the back cell. Um, Marshall, Aaron, Tom, and I are, um, have all been working on the new Genie portal. And uh, this is our first tutorial at a GDC, and we're excited to show you about it. All right, so we have three goals for today. And um, the first one is we just want to jump right in and do a simple experiment in Genie. Um, it's nothing fancy, but we're going to reserve a VM um, in Utah, one in Massachusetts. They're going to be connected by a layer two circuit, and we're going to send some layer two traffic um, across that connection. Very simple, but it's complete. It uses resources in different places, and it does layer two. The second thing we want to do today is we want to define and understand some GD terminology. There's five terms that we're going to define and we're going to use today, and we want to make sure that you leave the room understanding these five things and having used them. So we're going to go through each of these five terms. The third thing that we want to do is we want to, um, how do you use the Genie portal? Uh, hopefully most of you requested an account um, before you came, and so you're already set up to go home and um, use this at home. Um, and if you haven't and you're using a temporary account, we're more than happy to, um, to make you an account um, after the tutorial is over. So those are the three things we want to do today. All right. So, um, we're going to do a simple experiment. Um, this graphic that you see on the left, this logo, is one you're going to see in some other tutorials at GEC this week. Um, basically, we think that experiments have sort of three, three parts if you look at it at the very high level. Um, the first part is just designing your experiment, making sure you have access to the resources you need, reserving those resources. The second part is the meat of things, it's executing the experiment. You know, this is where you do the bit that would become a publishable paper or a dissertation. And then the third part is where you would um, delete your reservations, give your resources back um, so that others can use them, archive your data, um, just sort of finish out your experiment. Um, we, um, so you'll see these three, um, these three parts um, in other tutorials. Um, for, for us today, our first part has two steps. Um, and so we have a total of four parts, and those are four hands-on sections. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through the um, four sections. And right before we do each one, we'll talk about any terms that we might need in order uh, to understand before we do that section. All right, so let's just get started. All right, so what's the Genie portal? Um, it's a web-based tool for experimenters um, to manage experimenters, projects, and slices. We're going to define those terms in a second. It, in addition, it includes some simple tools to reserve resources. And we've just started writing this tool, and we hope to integrate with more tools in the future. So, um, you know, check back in a few months, and hopefully there will be more here. All right. So, what's our first term? Our first term is an experimenter. And what's an experimenter? An experimenter is somebody who uses Genie resources. Basically, it's you, right? You wouldn't be here if you weren't interested in running an experiment with Genie. You'll notice that there are different types of experimenters. They have different roles, basically. And because of those different roles, that gets in inside the portal will have different permissions. So perhaps my advisor and a grad student might have um, different roles and therefore different permissions. Or even more obviously, a professor who's teaching a class with a grad student assistant and the undergrads in that class will all have different roles and they'll have different permissions. There's different things that they can do and um, get permission to do in the portal. All right, so now that we have experimenters, they perform those experiments in the context of a project. Um, a project is basically how we organize research in Genie. A project contains both people and their experiments. In the picture, we've, I've shown the experiment as a slice, which we'll define in a minute, but for the moment, replace the word slice with experiment. So the project has some people who are in it, it has some experiments that are in it. Now, there has to be somebody who's responsible for the project, somebody who's in charge, who's willing to receive phone calls and email um, if something goes wrong or there's some sort of problem. Um, that person is known as the project lead, and they're the responsible for party for the project. All right, so then the question is, where do projects come from? 
Well, project leads are the ones who can create projects. Not just anyone can, um, because that's a serious responsibility. Um, when they create a project, they give it a name. That name is public, meaning anyone can see it. It will be the only project with that name, and it's permanent, meaning it will, there will never be another project with that name. So, so pick carefully when you, um, when you create the title of your project. CS 101 is probably not a great name for a project, right? Because every school on the planet will probably want a CS 101 project. Um, all right, so a project can contain many experimenters, and experimenters can be a member of many projects. So that's a many-to-many -many relationship. And then projects optionally can have an expiration. And this is largely to support classes and tutorials. So for example, the project we're going to use today has an ex will expire this weekend um, so that you know, I'm the project, I'm the project lead, and um, I don't want to have the responsibility for what people might do with this, you know, next week or next month or next year. Okay. All right, so that's our first two terms, experiment and project, and that gets us ready to dive into uh, the first step of part one, where we're going to make sure that we can access the resources that we need. All right. So the first thing we'll do is, if you haven't already, we'll log into the Genie portal. Um, then we're going to um, download, generate and download an SSH key pair, which will allow us to log in passwordlessly to our resources. And then we're going to join a project. Um, we'll use this name later, this GC16 portal tutorial. All right. So if you haven't already logged in uh, to the portal, it's, uh, the URL is on the screen. Um, and you can also be following along in your instructions. I think we're around, I'm not going to guess what page we're on. We're a couple of pages in already. Um, and you should go ahead and start logging in. If you're having any trouble whatsoever, if somebody in your group, your pair, can't log in, please raise your hand and let some, and someone will come help you. Is everybody logged in, really? Oh, yes. Okay, two people, three people. Are we supposed to be logged into the portal or the virtual machine? Good. You should be logged in both, both to the virtual machine and then within the virtual machine, um, open, the, open the browser. And um, there's actually a bookmark for um, the panther.gplab.pdia.com where you can just enter it yourself. Um, and so you should go and um, you should go uh, click the G use Genie button and log in. So, is there anybody else who needs help besides the three? So we got three people here. No, we haven't done the project part yet. Right. All you, all we want is for you to have logged in. Okay. Um, Aaron, hopefully we'll see. We got a guy up here. There's two more in the back. Um, what? That's fine. Okay, I'm going to keep talking for a little bit while Aaron and Tom help you guys out. Um, so, um, basically, anybody who has a supported account and a supported identity provider, which is usually provided by your school or employer, can log in to the, um, into the portal, but they have no privileges. Um, if you don't have an appropriate account, we're happy to make you one um, as a GPO identity provider, and a bunch of you have already taken advantage of that. Um, uh, so anyone can log in, um, but they have no privileges and therefore they can't do anything interesting. Being a member of a project is the thing that gives you um, the power to do things that are interesting. Um, the portal supports um, uh, members of the Uncommon Federation. Um, basically, if you're at a university, say University of Utah, you'll probably have a login that your school provides. And you can use that, maybe you log into the library to deal with um, books that are reserved and things like that. Um, and in common allows you to use that same login to log into other websites. Um, this is exactly like using your Facebook or your Google account to log in to a, um, a third party website. It's exactly what we're doing here. So if you have one of those accounts um, and uh, your provider shares appropriate attributes with us, um, you can um, log in using your same passwords and login screens that you know from before. All right, good. So, um, and I'm going to work through these things um, with you, but since everyone's logged in, um, hopefully you see a uh, screen that looks a little bit like um, 
uh, what's, on this, what's on the projector right now. So what you're seeing is the home page. You can get back to it with the, um, by clicking the button in the toolbar that says home. Um, and it'll list all your projects, your slices, and some log messages about re interesting recent activity. Because you're just have a new account, you're probably not a member of any projects yet, and you're not, you don't have any slices yet. In addition, um, on the, on the right-hand side of the toolbar, there's a profile page, which has some uh, useful but infrequently used tools, like the SSH, which we're going to do in a second. Um, and there's a help tab, um, which has a link to a glossary and sort of other basic information um, if you're having, um, have any questions or having some trouble. Okay. So, great. Um, then we'll, um, uh, after we log in, we're going to go click on the profile page and we're going to generate uh, an SSH key. And so I'm going to go do this.
directory and then we're going to change the permissions on the file um, and, um, and the third step the SSH add adds it to your uh, SSH agent if you're having to not be using the virtual machine but I just went ahead and put the instructions in there for doing those three things um, so you should do those at home so I'm going to do these three steps very carefully Yeah. 
produced. The first is resource, which is just a piece of infrastructure. Perhaps it's a computer or a piece of a network. That resource um, is something that you would reserve as need. That resource can be real or virtual. So that could be like a bare metal machine or it could be a virtual machine. Um, the things that you you can request resources using something called a resource specification, which is sometimes um, abbreviated RSpec. And so if you see that, that's what that is. Um, and there's lots of different kinds of examples. Things that we currently have in Genie <coughs> include um, computers and virtual machines, VLANs, overflow, and wide maps. In theory, a resource could be anything. It could be a you know, a what you know, some sort of piece of weather-related equipment, or you know, it could be lots of things. All right, so resources are managed. Um, reservable resources are managed by an aggregate. So an aggregate um, is the thing that you request resources from. Um, there's a lot of different types of aggregates. The ones you'll you'll hear about a lot um, at the GEC are the GE racks. Um, which are sort of standardized sets of Genie equipment that we're um, working really hard on. There's a picture on the right with um, the guys from the University of Utah, the uh, InstaGenie rack, um, and the guys from NC North Carolina with their ExaGenie rack. Um, those racks include compute resources and um, OpenFlow. So an OpenFlow is a different type of aggregate. There's also like um, WiMAX resources. We have some WiMAX based stations. Um, that are out there in the world. Um, not all of these are currently available through the portal. Um, but <coughs> Sorry, what? You can't access the internet right now? Sorry. Oh. Sorry, what? I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm just looking just in case you can find a shot. I think you can have some very Okay. Okay. Tell one, get a workbook. Maybe it's not accepting anymore. All right. Who can't access the internet right now? I just got back on. Did you just got back on? Anybody else? Me? And that works? Okay. So some people are saying. You can access the internet, right? Yeah. The that's Every the time. one on huh? the right. Every time I can access yeah. 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 um, I can't. I, perhaps not, not. a friendly party could go check. Um, with, um, with somebody who's not a friendly party. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's a fateful thing that the network conference has done with network connectivity. Um, I'm going to keep talking for a little bit and we're going to see if that improves. Um, and we'll, we'll stop in a second again um, if we have more help. Chaos is run off that. Yeah. Yeah. We still have a bunch of people more. Oh, are you helping? Oh, I'm just trying to do it. Okay. Okay. It's back now. It's back, it's back now. now. Okay. All right, so maybe try again if you can't get on. It didn't work a minute ago. Then very importantly, 
a slice has an expiration. And what this means is when that when the expiration is a, um, a date and a time, and when that time comes, um, your resources will go away, and they'll be um, someone else will be allowed to use them. Um, if you want your resources longer, you can renew your slice, and you can um, likewise renew the resources within that slice. Um, and that's something that's important to keep in mind when you're running an experiment. And finally, slice, you should have the expectation that slice names are public, that anyone can see them. Um, you can reuse a slice name. You can have a slice called, um, it's called Bob right now, and you can that slice can expire and you can make a new slice. It'll be a different slice, but it could also have the same name. You can have a second uh, Bob slice. They're two different slices, but they have the same name. So that name, um, so the slice name is public, it's reusable, and, but there can only be one slice with a given name at a given point in time. So I can have a slice Bob, um, but uh, you cannot also have a slice Bob. Okay. All right, so we, um, we promised five terms, so let's put them all together in one place. Um, we, have, we have a project, that project has a lead who is an experimenter, and it has other members who's also an experimenter. Within that project, there's one or more slices, and those slices contain resources from one or more aggregates. All right, good. So let's, um, we're ready for the second hands-on piece. Um, I'm going to work through it, um, and... We have to do this portion in sections anyways, um, so we'll get the network issues resolved as we do that. So this is the part where, now that we're logged in, we've done a lot of our one-time setup, that we can reserve resources. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna do three things here. We're gonna create the slice, which is sort of drawn as the gray box in the picture. Then we're gonna reserve a VM at two different aggregates, one in Utah and one at Massachusetts. Um, and then uh, we're going to, that takes some time for them to get booted and to come up like any um, computer would. And then we're going to wait to see if those resources are ready. So this is really important. Um, we have these linking balls. Um, the reserving resources at the aggregates is, is like a thing that takes real effort. And if all 40 or so people all go do that at once, um, it's asking you to do a lot of work at once. And I think we'll be happier and it'll go quicker if we don't all click at the same time. So we have these blinking balls, and they, well, if you jiggle them enough, they, they um, blink. blink. And basically, if you have, a, if your group, your pair has a ball, you can do the part where you reserve the resources. If you don't have a ball, please don't. Um, so we have like five of these, and so we're just gonna, we're gonna pass them along. Um, if anybody wants to go ahead and follow along in the instructions while I do it, that's fine. Um, do you guys have, are you, you got a ball? Take a ball. Ah, good. Excellent. Has anybody been, a big, okay, good. So go back to your home page and reload the home page. Okay, if anybody has to see a project, I have. 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 Okay. 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 okay, so I'll just, okay, there, so you're so. just saying, go on, I'm right, just so reading this, go to the terminal, right? Get, get uh, but you'll need this file that you downloaded. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering, how do I do that? So I tried copy and pasting out, it didn't work at all. It's right here. Um, I don't know. I'm not very experienced with virtual machines myself. Anybody not ready for a ball? Anybody join the project? So when you're done, pass the tool. What happens if you do a list on here? Okay, but I'm going to do it first. You just do a all right, so um, when you go back to the home page, you'll have a project visible, and when you can click on that project, there will be a button that says um, uh, create slice, um, and you're going to create a slice that matches the name on your worksheet that's at the top, 
I am doing this. I have the first worksheet, so my slice will be project one. And then, um, and then once you create the slice, you'll have a slice page. And there's a button to add resources. So we'll um, we'll do that. And um, and then we're going to reserve resources at two different places. Um, the instructions for where to reserve the resources are on page five. Um, there's a little picture. There's a different resource specification for each aggregate. So be careful and you know double check before you get submitted. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the home page. Very slowly. Good. So I'm now my temporary self is now a member of this G616 portal tutorial project. If I browse to that page, um, there's a button to create a slice, so I'll do that. Okay, and my slice is portal 01. Yours will be different. It'll be like portal 21 or portal 37. So I'm going to create my slice. Great. So now I have my slice created. Um, let's just sort of go over the slice page a little bit. There's some, a bunch of actions at the top, and then there's this table below that lists all the aggregates that are um, affiliated with portals and has some actions you can do on the right. Um, so what I want to do is add resources, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so the first one I want to do is I want to do reserve my resources at Utah. So I want, um, it says L2P Utah 02, and then I'm going to pick Utah Institute. And I'm going to double check my instructions. Excellent. So I'm going to click reserve resources. And this might take a while, this might take 30 seconds, uh, possibly longer. You'll get this blue box, and when it's done, some stuff will fill in. Oh, okay. So when can we And again, it's, a, it's even slower if, we, if there's a bunch of us doing this at the same time. So that's why it's so slow. If you do this at home, um, if you're doing this by yourself on a random, you know, Wednesday afternoon or something, um, it's much faster. So we pass the ball. I think so. Does anybody need help right now? Is anybody? How are we doing? Until you have the arm. Is anybody still unable to connect to the internet? Excellent. Is anybody, um, are people still waiting to join projects? Yeah, so Aaron's okay. working through the list. Excellent. Okay. Aaron and Nikki. Okay. All right, so Aaron and Nikki will get to that. And we have, this is this, don't worry, you're not being held up because you have to wait for a ball anyway. Um, go ahead. Good. All right, so my resource was reserved. And it tells me that I had one node and one link. It tells me the name. I've assigned it a name. It's called client. And then the other really important thing is this, um, there's some login information here. All right, so I've reserved my resources at, um, in Utah. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click this slice portal 01 link here, that takes, it's gonna take me back to the slice page. And so I'm gonna click add resources again and reserve a second resource. All right, so this one's the one that's um, it's in Massachusetts, but it says GPO because it's um, in the GPO's lab in Massachusetts. So I'm going to go find uh, L2P GPO 02, and I'm going to choose GPO and Steam, and I'm going to double check. And I'm going to reserve resources, and again, this is going to take a little while. So again, if you have an orange ball, blinking ball, and you've gotten your both, if you happen to have gotten your resources already, go ahead and pass along the ball. Um, otherwise, don't do it until you get the ball.
have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and someone will come help you. Internet, 
And that's the interface that when, you're at, when you SSH into your node, that's the interface you're going over. So that's important to understand because in a second, we're going to do things to the data interface and if you do them to the control interface, you might not be able to talk to your node later. So be careful. Okay, so we're going to do three major things here. We're going to log into our nodes, uh, each of our two nodes. Then we're going to run our experiment. We're going to just send some IP traffic. We're going to ping a couple of times. Then, um, then we're going to remove the IP address on our data interfaces um, and send some layer two traffic using a little sort of quasi layer two ping uh, uh, bit of code that we have. And then we're done, we'll log out. Okay, so um, uh, you saw that when you did, you created, um, when you reserved your resources, it showed you some places where you could uh, log in, um, but we browsed away and how do you get that information back? So there's these uh, details buttons for each aggregate, and which will pull up the same resource, the same information that you saw before. Um, so when you do that, um, you'll, it'll look like this. And there's the little blue link. Um, the little blue link you can actually click on. Um, if you're using the tutorial VM, it will um, it will pop open a little uh, tool called Fire SSH, which is which is a SSH client that runs in your browser. Um, if you're doing it on a Mac, it should uh, pop open a terminal because we added our key to the agent. That should work. Um, and if nothing works for you, you can always copy and paste it. Um, all right. So we have. Uh, two details pages which have, which have the information, and then we're going to log in uh, to each of those. We're going to do run ifconfig to see what interfaces we have. Um, we don't have uh, things in our path, so it's slash spin slash ifconfig that you're going to run in each place. And then, then we're going to fill out the worksheet. The worksheet is very important. This is the please do not take off the IP address on your control interface because. That will be seven minutes later. So it's important to fill out the worksheet. Um, and uh, in fact, I'm going to go do that myself right now. Okay. <laughs> anybody who's not into the control project yet? Okay, guys, can you resubmit your request if you're going to add it already? Can you add it to the project? Also, don't forget to pass along your orange ball if you're done with it. So um, here we are. We're back on the slice page, and we want to click on the details link. Um, and I can see the interfaces, 
which I'll use to fill in my worksheet in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to browse back to the slice page and I'm going to log into my other node. So I know that was the Utah Instagene one. So I'm click details again. The two you're logging into are the two, first two rows. So if you get lost, um, so I'm going to do the exact same thing here again.
How many people have reserved their resources? Yeah, we're gonna have better. Okay. Does anybody? If you are done with your orange ball, be sure to pass it along. Um, and I think everyone is a member of our project now. I hope. If you have, yeah. Anyone having any problems? Any problems reserving resources? Problems logging in, SSHing into their nodes? Problems writing IF config? There's too many numbers and MAC addresses. You know. All right. Okay, I'm going to just keep talking. Um, um, be sure to raise your hand if you have a question. There's plenty of people to help. Okay. So, all right, um, I'm going to point out a couple of things. So, my, my, I'm using the, the first account. So, there's four places on the worksheet that assume I'm using like one. So, my slicing portal on one. My, um, uh, my desired IP address has a one in the third spot um, in both places. And then the ether type we're going to use in a minute ends in a one. You're going to have a different number in these four places, but the example, when I'm working through it in the slides, assume I'm using this account. Okay? All right, so, so now we're going to go do um, some things by hand. The instructions this is are. Starts really on page eight, page eight and nine in the in the handout. Um, if you're looking at the um, online version, this is the uh, part two execute experiment section, um, and I'm just going to work through them. What we're going to do is first, we're going to configure the IP address so each node has a different um, IP in the same slash twenty four subnet. So I'm 101011, but you might be 101091, um, and then 101092, or something like that. And then we're going to ping between those nodes, and that should succeed because we're just we just have two um, virtual machines and they're pinging each other. That's so just sort of making sure everything's up okay and the power is on. If you can't do that when you get to that part, you should raise your hand and ask for help. Then we're gonna um, disable IP address on um, on our data interface. That's really important on you know, your data interface by just setting the IP address to 0000. zero, zero, zero. And, um, and then we're going to ping again to show that that no longer works. Uh, and then we have this little um, little bit of code called ping plus, which just sends um, uh, an Ethernet, uh, Ethernet frame with uh, an Ether type that you filled in. Aaron, there's a guy in the front here. Aaron. Um, and so on the server side, we're going to run ping plus listener with that ether type. And then on the client side, um, we're going to run ping plus with the MAC address oh, like from the server side, which is what's written on your sheet, the um, data interface from the client yeah. side, yeah. Just and that ether type. And then it has it. The the so I'm going to give this a go. So um, now we're ready to, I'm going to ping. So I'm going to go to my client terminal. 
and I'm going to ping my server data plane IP address. And I'm going to have it sent by the And then just go through. Great, link is up. All right, and now I'm going to um, bring down the, um, the IP address on that interface. Yeah, yeah this is me. So this is yours. Which is the same before, except the IP address is not that. It's all zeros. Well, I think that's the So then these are the So that's You can see that um, if you look at this guy on the bottom, the IP address is gone. I'll do the same on the server. Now this is a pass range that lets you use this key so that only you can access it. So you want to pick a pass range that you're going to receive. And again here, um, I have to address it now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my client, and I'm going to repeat the things that I did a minute ago that worked. And now it just hangs and nothing happens. So I have to control C out of it. So, um, so that's good. What we wanted to happen happens. happen. So now I'm going to do the layer two. I'm going to go to the server side and type the server. And it has to be five characters wide. making sure that your first is Oh, that was just to make it Exactly. No, actually, it's a minimum. And I'm going to use the ether type for my worksheet. And that's just going to sit there waiting to receive um, some input from our client. This side's pink plus. I'm going to say include the server MAC address. I'm going to keep the top of the piece of the light and one, two, right? Yeah. So, you did three, and then you do four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, make sure to save off anything you want, and then hit delete at each aggregate. So, um, so here, there's a delete button on the far right on the uh, slice piece for each aggregate. No, I think we're good. Um, okay, and so I'm going to go do that real quick. Before 5.30, 10 minutes before, because I want to take a photo of the group. group. group.
want to learn more, um, there's other things at the, today's G, or this GAC. Um, we did talk about it, but there's uh, two other tools that are integrated with the portal for reserving resources. There's Slack, there's a big button on the slice page. If you click that, that pulls up that nice graphical interface that Jake showed in the earlier, uh, his earlier talk. Um, and I think I believe that's being used in an institute tutorial on Thursday morning, first thing. Um, to go learn about that. There's also a command line tool to do the same thing, the sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, the Omni command line tool, um, you can use that with, uh, with your user credential uh, generated um, through the portal. Um, and that'll be used in the advanced networking experiments tutorial on Wednesday um, afternoon that Nikki's leading. That one will be good too. If you need any help or have any questions, there's the drop-in session on Wednesday afternoon. There's the help table during breaks today and tomorrow. And there's a coding sprint on Thursday afternoon. Um, I and some other people will be manning that. You can come by. You want to start working on an experiment, come by and we'll help set you up. Um, after the GC, if you have any questions, always send help mail to help at genie.net. That's Nikki, who's in the back, and Vic. They'll answer those questions and they'll redirect you to the right place. That's the easiest thing to remember. If you have a portal specific question, you're more than welcome to email portalhelp at gd.net, which goes to me, Tom, Aaron, and Marshall. Um, and we are, we are always looking for feedback on ways to make the portal better. We know that there's always room for improvement and we're happy to hear um, what changes you're looking for. And that's it. We have a tutorial survey. Um, which we would love for you to fill out so that we know what we could do better for next time. Um, there's a URL here, and um, there's paper copies which we'll pass around. And um, so that's sort of the meat of the tutorial. I'm sure there's people who are still working, and I'll go around and help answer questions. And thank you so much for coming.